Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Fairy Garden Hello card. I have combined lots of stamps from different stamp sets here to create my fairy garden. I've seen a bunch of those fairy gardens that people have created in their flower pots and in their own home gardens, and I thought it would be fun to kind of take that whole idea and create it on a card. I am starting, I've got several stamp sets here. I am. The main ones are Fairy Friends, Gleeful Gardens, and Gnome Sweet Gnome. And I like the Gnome Sweet Gnome because I think the little mushroom house plays really nicely with the little fairy house from Fairy Friends. I'm going to stamp all of my images that I want to use on some Bristol Smooth cardstock because I'm going to be doing a little coloring with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I am using multiples of lots of the images. The grass in particular from Gleeful Gardens, I have multiples of it, even more than what I actually stamped here. I believe I stamped another small little grouping of grass and the larger one, so there's three larger ones and two small. The Mushroom House from Gnome Sweet Gnome, I think pairs great with the two mushroom images from Gleeful Gardens. A fairy from Fairy Friends, of course. And then the two sunflower images are so similar, but they have enough difference that I like how they work together. So I stamped those. Those are from the Gleeful Gardens and Fairy Friends. Now for the green, I am coloring in using several shades of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. They are shown across the bottom of the screen and I'm blending them. They blend beautifully on this paper. If you have used the Zigs and you just don't like the results, try this Bristol Smooth cardstock. It will completely change your mind with these markers. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm not actually using any water. You totally could if you wanted to. I like the vibrancy of the colors and how smoothly they blend on this paper. So once I have all the green areas colored, I'm gonna move on to my sunflowers, just laying down a little bit of that yellow, and I'm gonna leave it and come back to it in a little bit. For the mushrooms, I am going with a color combination of carmine red and light carmine and then yellow dots. I like this combination. I've used it a lot for mushrooms. Um, I just, for whatever reason, it just kinda is what I toured or gravitate towards. I also want this pop of color. There's lots of greens going on here. This is gonna be a really colorful card, but the base of it all is the greenery in the garden, so I want my mushrooms to definitely stand out as well as the little fairy house. So once I have the reds, I'm gonna color in a little bit of yellow for the dots. I'll go back in with lemon yellow and blend that out, but you can also pick up a little bit of the red and blend that into those yellow areas if it's a little too bright yellow. That's gonna add a little bit of that orange element to the yellow and just add another layer and dimension. For the fairy house, I went with magenta. I wanted it to definitely stand out since this is a fairy garden. I am combining the pink and purple zig markers. Love this combination. It is so pretty, I think. Before I move on to the rest of the fairy house, I did a fair amount of skipping around, kind of whatever spoke to me at the moment. I'm gonna color in the bird feeder from Gnome Sweet Home, or Gnome Sweet Gnome, rather, with some grays. This is just gonna be kind of almost a background element, but I think it works perfectly with the fairy garden kind of feel that I was going for here. So it's kind of gray, I wanted it, wanted it to look sort of cement like and then I'm going to go in and fill my bird feeder with some water. I'll even take my grays now add that to the stepping stones and the porch on the houses. Add some yellow to the window to make it look like a light is on and that a fairy is home. I'm incorporating a little bit deeper color with the violet and the purple combination for the door. 
And then I decided to go back into the centers of my sunflowers and add some browns. I'm using brown and beige. And taking a little bit of that brown color, just like I did with the mushrooms, and pulling that brown into the petals. Again, gonna give you a little bit of look of orange and add more dimension to that color. For the bases of my mushrooms, that's gonna be brown and beige as well. Same two colors I used for the centers of the sunflowers. I'm gonna do all three the same. So the two individual mushrooms as well as the little mushroom house. Laying down my darker color first and then blending it out with the lighter color. If it blends out too much, you can always go back in with your darker color and add a little bit more dimension. Again, yellow in the window to make it look like the lights are on and it's someone's home. And I'm just gonna go with gray for the door here on this house. At this point, I really didn't wanna incorporate any additional colors. For the fairy wings, I'm using haze blue, and because these blend with water, I'm taking the Wink of Stella Zig, uh, Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen and blending it out. It's gonna add glitter to the wings, plus kind of blend out that blue. The face is a combination of the flesh color Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker and beige. Um, it's a great color combination. Color in her dress with some Persian green and turquoise green. And then her hair. I originally tried to kind of do more of a feathering look and I probably should have just left it there, but I did pull in the dark brown color. Um, and then I tried to add some yellow and it just did not work. And I left it in here to show you that instead of scrapping the whole thing, I went back in with my beige color, blended it all out, and then I flicked in or feathered in the brown. And that ended up fixing her hair. I didn't have to go in and redo anything or anything like, or redo the whole image or anything like that. I did stamp the lantern from the Fairy Friends stamp set and colored it in with a little haze blue and yellow. I'm stamping the lantern holder and some additional greenery elements with the freshly mown, yes, freshly mown, or freshly cut grass, sorry, kept getting that wrong, from Lawn Fawn. And then I've used all the coordinating dies and I'm gonna die cut these. I die cut as many of the images with one pass at the machine as I possibly could, then I went back and did the rest. From a couple of sheets of smooth white cardstock, I die cut two A2 sized stitched rectangles using that die from the large stitched rectangles die collection. From one of those, I'm gonna take the simple stitched hillside borders and I'm gonna die cut my two border elements that I'm gonna use along the bottom of the card. This card is really heavy with embellishment. Lots and lots going on. So my background needs to be fairly simple, but I do need to create a scene. So these three pieces, the background and the two simple stitch till side borders are gonna be all that's going on in the background. I decided to custom color them with Distress inks using a fairly light hand. I'm using Twisted Citron for the two layers of grass. Just blending that out really well. This smaller hill layer needs to be completely covered. The other one, however, is gonna be partly covered up, so I don't have to worry about covering the entire thing near the bottom. I did try to concentrate my color near the top and lighten it a little bit as it, I went down the border. Do the same thing for the second one. Once I have these two colored, I can go ahead and do my background. And for that, I'm gonna use Tumbled Glass Distress Ink. I purposely kept my Distress Ink colors fairly light. Twisted Citron is one of the lighter green colors. Tumbled Glass is a very light blue color. You can definitely build it up a little darker if you want to, which I end up doing here a little bit. I do build up my color more. However, they are on the lighter end of the spectrum, so they're not gonna take away from the bold, vibrant 
look of all these stamped and colored and die cut images that are going to make up this fairy garden. Once I have my color applied to my rectangle, I am come all done here and I can pretty much go ahead and start putting it together. Except as I lay everything out, I think I really need some more going on at the top part of the card. So from the Chit Chat stamp set, they have these little birds. I've stamped a couple of them here and I'm gonna color those in really quick with my zigs and then die cut those. They aren't huge, they're not big. You could grab birds from any Lawn Fawn stamp set because there's lots of them and they coordinate so well. But one perched on the bird feeder and one perched somewhere else is just gonna round out that top portion of the card and not make it look like everything is concentrated in the bottom area. Before I attach anything, I am going to stamp a greeting. This is from the Gingham Backdrops stamp set. I purposely looked for something small because I did not have a plan for my greeting when I designed the card. So I love this small size of the hello. I'm gonna take the exclamation point and only ink up the little period there and stamp that behind hello instead of using the whole exclamation point. So I'm carefully taking that to my ink pad, only inking that part up, and then stamping that right there on the design. And I'm ready to put it all together. Building from the back up, I'm going to attach both of my border panels. Then I'm gonna start here with the little mushroom house and the blades of grass. And some elements are gonna be tucked behind the first layer, some are gonna be on top, some are gonna be tucked behind that back layer, just to give it that really cohesive look of a scene. So there's one of my sunflowers. You can see it's kind of starting to all come together, the bird perched on the bird bath. I'll put my fairy house here as well. Again, those great big, uh, blades of grass from Gleeful Gardens add a really nice touch and kind of make the fairy house and the mushroom house look like they're tucked inside of the garden. It helps with the sizing so that it seems like the fairy house or the two houses are much smaller than um, anything else because blades of grass are so huge here. I just like the whole concept of that. tucking some elements behind others and overlapping. This is all just ways to make it look like a really beautiful, cohesive scene. I am using the Zotz Bling glue dots to attach a lot of the elements that are kind of hard to attach with a traditional tape runner, especially the smaller pieces. I did use the Zig glue pen for the lantern holder because there really wasn't a better way to attach that, or either of those pieces, I guess I should say. They're pretty thin. Placing my other little birds standing on top of that. And don't forget the fairy in the garden. Now I'm gonna take the little glittering images from the Fairy Friends stamp set, but they didn't really work. I was trying to stamp them with the white pigment ink and I didn't like it. So what I did, I stamped over them twice and still I just didn't think they showed up that great. Again, instead of scrapping it, I'm gonna take the Stardust glitter pen, trace over those designs and they're gonna have a little bit of glitter and it's gonna help them stand out and look like a fairy garden. Once that's done, I'm gonna take a side fold card base. I'm using the Teflon score and scoring it with that Teflon bone folder, adding some adhesive to the front of my card, and then taking my whole panel to that card front, attaching it right there. I'm gonna flip it over real quick, take my scissors, snip off any of that excess, and that is gonna finish up my card. Thanks for joining me today. We'll catch you next time.